2017 Toyota Tundra. It's 19 inches, bumped and strapped with four-wheel drive. Wow. If you take out that axle, you can get 21 inches. The rear end's got a uh, 3.0 by 16 coil over. Okay. Rear cantilever uh, airbag setup that I did. Dudes. What's up guys, we're in Orange County. We're with Andrew from Trail Command. He just got home and we're greeting him. He doesn't know, but we've been here all day. We ate in his house, watched some movies, hung out for a little bit. I'm just kidding. What's up, Andrew? What's up, man? How are you? We're just gonna jump into this, man. Andrew is a fabricator, welder, metal specialist, and uh, he built this thing. Um, can we say where? Can we say where? No, we can't really say. It's, huh? Yeah, it's let's keep it quiet. low key. You gotta keep it low key. <laughs> we're gonna keep it low key, but if you guys want to know where Andrew built this. We suggest you reach out to him. He'll tell you some stories. Super um, uh, bluegrass. Yeah. Grassroots. Super, super, super grassroots. This is like where are most pre-runners built, right? You got. You guys can figure that out. You guys can comment. But uh, we want to share more. But there's some circumstances about this specific area <laughs> and fabricating near this area. That's pretty much all I could say, right? Yeah. What yeah. are you hiding? Nothing. I say, but we're going to focus on the truck. And again, if you guys want to check out Andrew's stuff, Trail Command, you guys can hit him up. We're going to put his link right here. And Trail Command is what, Andrew? Um, it's my pride. It's my passion. It's my baby that I've been growing for a while. Basically, I went to school, got taught by some of the professional, like, well-known people. So Jeff, that created all the Walker Evan, like, racing, like, wheels and uh, shocks. He taught me how to use SolidWorks. And from there, uh, with my knowledge and background of growing up with automotive everything i uh i created trail command heck yeah it's been like my passion i've been going for a while well, so trail command is is what exactly is it a, like fabrication it's a, yeah it's off-road off-road fabrication it's uh metal working it's not just um trucks and sand rails it's okay. also like hot rods that's kind of where i cut my teeth growing up oh right on so it's a lot of hot rods a lot of tuner cars uh, muscle cars pretty much anything that has to do with fabrication and Cu metal work. Customization, yeah. customization and fabrication. Heck yeah, cool. So what have been some projects that you've worked on you're pretty proud of? Uh, let's see, we built quite a bit. I built a 67 Camaro with my dad when I was in onesies. Uh, built a 68 Camaro. Uh, built a Datsun 510. It's probably well known. Everybody knows that one pretty well. Oh, that's lost, cool. Lost that car in an unfortunate street racing incident. Oh, um, wow. The judge was pretty cool about Let me keep my car. Um, for a little bit until I had to sell it to pay the funds. Got it. Um, had an Evo that was also well known too in high school. Built the Evo that was on um, Street Racing uh, as well, Street Racing Magazine. And um, heck yeah, yeah, we've I've built a lot. The list goes on. <laughs> we've Very had cool. Quite a bit. We're just low key about it. So how did you get into like off roading and all this stuff? I mean, I so, mean, th this truck looks pretty solid, man. How did you go from all the street stuff to this? So I've always had like a weird obsession with off road. I grew up that 2004 era, 2002 era with like Metal Militia and Glamis with everyone with the sand rails, the Banshees, like those are my things. Like I love that. Yeah. And uh, just, dude, do you remember, do you, do you guys remember the rhinos? <laughs> oh! Do you remember yes, rhinos? Yes. Dude, those are crazy. Well, I had one actually and I flipped it. How, exactly, <laughs> there it is. That's why, dude. They're super flip happy. Right? I'm okay. I got helmet on. I got helmet on. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rhinos were like the the ATCs of the side by side world. Yep. I think they they used to like add like seats to the back of those things, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah, he had that. He had that for hunting too. We had the, the yeah. third row seat. Dude, it's insane. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so so you come from that era. I come from that era. Yeah. Funny thing is, I bought this truck brand new when I was working at Toyota. Oh, in really? 2017. I uh, saw it coming off a truck, and I was like, "That's my truck." I'm is that it. right? I literally took it home that same day, so no one has touched this truck but me. Right on. Um, so I got that truck and I had the Datsun at the time. So I bought a truck, trailer, and the Datsun all within like a month between each other. Hell so yeah. The funds were real low. And I bought it on April 1st and no one believed me that I bought a brand new truck. So it was kind of cool. And then it <laughs> didn't awesome. stay stock for long. I know there's videos that my buddies have of me saying like, this one's going to stay stock. Yeah. 
it did not stay stock for long at did all. The, yeah. The builder in you came yeah, out the, and I just think, freaking. I think at the end of the first month, they already had like exhaust intake, uh, window tint, you know, your typical like bolt on kings, and it just kind of snowballed from there. I think what's so cool about these Tundras is, as you guys know, I always say this, the Toyota platform is a solid platform. It's, oh yeah, they're you know, super solid. The motors, the trans, everything that's already with this thing is 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 phenomenal, you know what I mean? So I bet it was hard for you to, at that first point to be like, ah, oh, all right, I'm gonna start digging into this thing. Yeah, now. especially with how expensive they are. <laughs> yeah, for I got, sure. I got a lot of, uh, you know, grief for that, for cutting into it. How was truck. mom and dad about it, bro? They were not happy about it. They were pissed? They were, they were pissed. They're like, well, you got a beautiful truck that's a daily. You got your toy in the garage. Why are you messing with it? What are thing? you doing? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, you know, I'm not afraid to cut metal, man. It's just yeah. metal. At the end of the day, like, I love it. But, you know, I've seen some traumatic stuff. And yeah. it just takes one kid in a Honda Civic to just total your car and then you're done. So right, right. Just cut them up. If you can put them back together, as long as you know what you're doing, you can do it, man. I mean, it's just yeah. fun. Yeah, this would be a time for you guys to have your parents stop watching this video and you guys just watch it on your own. But absolutely right. I mean, I'm not going to lie, dude. I, uh, I, I'm old, but I did that with my high school truck. And I chopped it up and it was a really good looking. And it wasn't a very good looking truck at the time. But it was new and it was clean. And I got a lot of uh, flack from family too. Like, yeah. what the hell are you doing? Why are you chopping this thing up? But it's just pre-runner stuff, man. Yeah. It, my, my dream truck to build right now would probably be like one of the newer Toyota Tundras. Yeah. I love the way they look, dude. They're freaking amazing. And um, just to see even this one, this is like a newer model too. And this one looks freaking awesome. But I'm going to zip it. Take it away, Andrew. Tell us about this thing, man. Yeah, man. So 2017 Toyota Tundra. Um, God, where do we start? I know, dude. Uh, is... I went through every rendition you can think of. I did the bolt-on kings. I did the mid-travel, the long travel bolt-on kits, spring under, um, shock relocation, everything. But the one thing that I always stayed with was that I always wanted to tow because I still have that trailer. Okay. So I have a 20 foot enclosed trailer that I tow a lot with, about 10,000 pounds fully loaded. You tow this thing with it? I tow with this thing, yes sir. So, oh and this God. is actually the best towing setup that I have set up on it right now. <laughs> That's um, insane, dude. And it, yeah, we used to go out to the desert with that same trailer because we set it up to be like a little camper in the front. So we take that out with all the toys, the bikes, and then we just go beat on, beat on the truck, and then hook it up and drive back home. So wow, gotta make sure everything's built right to do that. So, but yeah, uh, dang, go. really a testing to the Toyota power in this thing, huh? Yeah, man, five seven. So, five, so, seven so power. tell us about this. Uh, the front end. What do you got on this? So the front end is a collaboration between LSK, me, and my good buddy Alex Fishburn. Uh, in Utah. So we did a upper control arm, which is a, a billet J arm kit that uh, Alex and I uh, went back and forth on some ideas and he kind of helped like, you know, make me uh, get the motivation to do all this work. Yeah. So it's a billet upper arm. Uh, it's a J arm that allows you to put bigger shocks in there. Alex is running a, a 12s. I'm running 10s. Here, I'll come uh, around this way. Dang. You still get about the same amount of travel. So it's 19 inches bumped and strapped with four wheel drive. Wow. If you take out that axle, you can get 21 inches if you're running 12 inch shocks. This one gets about 20 inches. Whoa. Dudes. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. So four That's drives, awesome. Four wheel drives is one of those things where once you have it, you don't want to get rid of it. So this is like ready for ball hawk pre running, basically, with uh, the four wheel drive, huh? Yeah, it needs some more shock twe uh, tweaking, but yeah, it's pretty, okay. it's pretty good out of the box. Right on, man. Hell yeah. It's a good looking upper arm, too. That looks freaking solid as hell, dude. Yeah, Love the design. Awesome. That looks freaking amazing. Heck yeah. So 19 inches with the uh, four wheel drive. With the four wheel drive. I'm sold, bro. That's yeah. it. Episode's done. All right, guys. <laughs> see you guys later. Have a good one. You got the best of both worlds because you got um, perfect geometry. Yeah. So there's zero bump steer. Uh, the caster sweep in the whole thing is only like two degrees. Jeez. The camera change is in, is pretty big because it's you know ISF. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. happen. But yeah, for what it is, it's actually really good. Amazing, bro. And then look at this big ass shock you got in here, dude. Yeah, four point oh by ten, uh, four tube. Jeez. Came off of a, a tin car actually. Oh, what, what? Oh, a tin car. A tin car, yeah. Okay, right and, on. Um, 
And then Marvin from King hooked me up with those coilovers last minute, literally. What shock? What shock is this? This is bypass. That's a fox. So okay. I'm going the, the ultimate sin king next to a fox. Let's go. Let's go. Hey man, whatever you can get your hands on, you know, it'll work. Hell yeah, dude. So, so that's a, a 40 fox. 40 fox by 10. By um, 10. And that's a, a 10 by 2.5 king with all the bells and whistles on it. So that's yeah. basically like a raptor shock for a raptor long travel. And then um, it's got a 2.5 by 2.5 bump fox as well. There we go. So Damn. it's just kind of been over the time, just whatever I can get my hands on and build. Nice, man. And then I see the you got the KC uh, cyclones. Yeah, the cyclones are here. Got little lights for some, uh, you know, for some show show effect. No, and that's then cool. And I got a ton of rock lights on this thing that are white for uh, when you wrench it, because trust me, we break our toys in the desert. We need to wrench. <laughs> it, it happens, man. It happens to the best of us, right? Damn, dude, I can't get over this setup. I'm, I, I, I know I keep filming this, but it's so cool to see how like everything's so clean packaged in here. And, you know, um, I, I, before we started filming, Andrew and I were talking about how your whole vibe of this truck is kind of like sleeper. Yeah, I sleeper. try to keep it a sleeper because like that's the one thing that bothered me a lot was. You can get a really nice truck that does really well in the deck uh, in the dirt, but you hate driving on the street. You can't go to Home Depot to pick up some like lumber. So yeah, definitely the way I built this thing was to drive it every day, which which I do. I drive it every single day. How, how stoked are people that actually know about trucks when they come up and check it out? Uh, people that know about trucks are super stoked on it. They, yeah, they don't they can't wrap their head around like the fact that it's a linked truck with a cage and it still has a bed. And, and then, then they take can, the they look at the size of those, oh, yeah. And then they see it's four wheel drive with those big big yeah. old shocks in there. Damn. Yeah, it's she buggies. Hell yeah, dude. Okay, cool. Anything else to cover up here? So um, the yeah, LSK lower arm. LSK lower arm. Uh, Ryan from LSK hooked me up with those. Um, oh yeah. Spindles as well. Okay. I uh, got my super beefy Baja proven uh, skid plate in the front, so okay. you can throw a jack underneath that and lift it up from. Oh anywhere. really? Yeah. So that, that front skid plate has literally gone on a couple of my customers' trucks. Um, Mike, shout out to you, Mike. Um, he took it to Baja and his truck was like one of the only trucks that made it through because he, he was using that skid plate for sure. Hell yeah, dude. How's the a, how's a steering on this thing? Is it still stock? Still, still rack and pinion. But, okay. Um, how is that? How does that feel with like, I'm sure with the right geometry, it's probably it, it not feels too bad, perfect. Right? It feels perfect with the right geometry. The, the lot of thing that blows these racks out is having too much caster. Hmm. So there's a lot of strain on the front uh, location because they're now in the front versus the older Tundras were in the back. Okay. Uh, back steering. Now that that's right. So yeah, you got to be really careful about how you set up your caster on it because you will blow those racks. And the perfect person to call about that is our boy Andrew right here. So if you guys have one of these tundras, have some questions, hit him up. Um, anything else to cover in the front? Uh, it's your standard, you know, Toyota TRD Pro grill on the front. Got the 2018 headlights, LED headlights in there. Nice. Uh, you got a cooler in here, which we'll talk about later. Okay, oh. right on. Um, yeah, I got an NFAT bumper that I modified and added a much beefier skid plate on it, some tubes on the top. And it's cool. just one of those things where it's like I could build one, but I like that step because I constantly do work on my truck. Oh, so I love that, dude. That step definitely comes in handy. That's freaking awesome. Very, very uh, well thought out. And then what lights are we running up here? Uh, China Baja. China Baja, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, right those there. are legit Baja designs. Okay. Pocket ain't deep enough to get the front bar, but one day it will be. One day. One Let, day. Let's but... see what our friends at Baja Designs can do for Andrew. Help them out, guys. Come on, Jeez, let's go. Man. Brennan, help them out. Best. best products, best light. He's not, he's not lying. He, no, he said true. it. It's the best products, the best lights, dude. Down, I've had Casey's, I had uh, Rigid, and not knocking you guys, you got great products, but the light output from Baja Designs is insane. We are the best. <laughs> this dude's speaking facts, man. Um, hell yeah, dude. Jumping into the motor, gotta pop the hood. Look at all these details, dude. I love the gold. Those are all functional, by the way. So I was tired of my, my grill, my the front hood bulge yeah. popping out. So it kept popping out every time we're in Barstow going through Maine. So I this got, isn't just like no, that's, bling. No, that's to keep it on the truck because it kept trying to fall off the truck and I was getting annoyed by it. So nobody wants to look, you know, yeah. funny going down the high No, this is dope. Court, so. I love it. I love the gold too, man. My, my, my wife's Persian. I think it's like a gold thing to be Persian. So yeah. I'm kind of kind of liking the gold stuff now. You know? well, Armenians. <laughs> I'm Armenian. Oh, you're so Armenian? Oh, right like on. The there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't far from each other, bro. Uh, I put extra hood pins in there because trust me, the hood was moving around like crazy out okay. there. Um, these trucks are big. They're heavy, man. They're going to move out in the dirt. So 
Where do we start? So I got a, a blower from a buddy of mine uh, who needed cash quick. Wow. So it's a TRD blower that uh, Nurgle from Superchargers Online helped me rebuild. Uh, basically got, you know, upgraded fuel system because that's the Achilles heel on making power with these things. Okay. So it's got air mode of fuel. Um, it's got 1,000 cc injectors, you know, big stuff uh, to make some serious power. And I got a smaller pulley on it too with help with Church's Tuning and... Is that a local spot? Yeah, Church's Tuning, if you're like a, like that's where my hot rod roots okay. come from. He's okay. a old school uh, tuner for, for JDM and a lot of the, you know, V8s and LSs. Nice. So he helped me tune this thing. It's on HP tuners. Uh, we ran into a few issues here and there. Uh, this thing's supposed to be making at seven pounds of boost with this pulley. For some reason, mine's making 10. I'm not complaining, but She's making some sauce. Nice, so dude. We, we put it on the dyno and we had to limit some stuff, but with fuel starvation, we put down 450 to the rear tire. 450? Yeah, 450 to the rear tire. Damn! 37s. Damn, and, uh, that's good, dude. Some then, so. <laughs> wow, man. That must be, that must, that's a lot of kick right that's, there. Yeah, she moves. She. Damn. It'll All light right. them up if you're not ready. <laughs> Let's go, dude. That's sick, man. It sounds like you got a good setup here. How, how long have you been running this setup so far? Uh, we just put this on the same time we built the truck. Okay. So we built it this year. Uh, okay. The setup I've been running around probably probably got about 5,000 miles on it already because I've been driving it every day trying to get all the bells and whistles. Yeah. Like making noise and yeah, make sure, make sure everything's, everything's, everything's dialed in. Down. Yeah. So if you can shake it down here at home before you take it out to the desert, it's it's much better to do that. Right on. So very cool, and it, it looks very clean, man. I think you did a really great job of like securing everything in here. It looks like very well put together and ready to rip. Yeah, I try to go for that OEM plus look and try to keep in mind what you know OEM did, and use their same tactics to right. mount stuff because they, especially Toyota, they think of everything when it comes to rattling and uh, moving around, so. Right, right. All the fenders have been raised to get me some more up travel. Okay. We Re redid all the fenders, try to keep all the water and dirt out of the engine bay as much as possible. Right on. Our next step is we're doing, um, so trail command, we're working on doing an electric fan conversion on these things. Okay. Um, and something that's gonna flow, you know, 5,000 plus CFM. So we could take some strain off the engine because I have blown multiple radiators i have blown multiple uh, uh clutch fan pulleys and stuff like that just okay. everything and anything you could think of on this on this truck i have broken okay by finding the limit so and that's and that's why you guys want to find people who are actually going out there and using their shit because they're putting the stuff that they're using to the test you oh, know yeah. what i mean and you guys are finding the weak spots oh yeah right so what's up with this cooler over here? So that cooler is your for the supercharger. So that allows, so here we got water coming through the cooler because inside this has like a radiator mm -hmm. to cool down the uh, air. When you spin the t uh, blower, you're gonna create more heat in the air. So that cools down the air before it goes into the motor, just like how an intercooler would be on a supercharger or on a turbo. Right. So it cools down the air, has your reservoir for it. And then the way I set that up is 100% like, grassroots too because i'm using a volkswagen jetta pump which is an electric pump water pump to cycle the the coolant around and then that's the amazon special for the cooler in the front and it's a hell yeah thick three inch uh three row cooler so it cools it down really quickly heck yeah dude that's freaking awesome man other than everything underneath the engine bay a uh, cool little product that we make too is the raptor lights with baja designs so those sit on the hood, so you don't have to mess with them every time you take uh, open the hood or not. Nice. So uh, those are 3D printed prototypes. My truck always gets the prototype stuff. Right. And uh, customers always get the best, but that's the way I want it because this is the guinea pig, you know, this is the one that tests everything out. So yeah. uh, those are still the prototypes. I got the, pr you know, production ones inside. I just never got a chance to put them on mine. Okay. Uh, but yeah, those are pretty cool because those give you that little bright uh, yellow light. And I was just tired of Chinese ones constantly going out. So. Hell all yeah. The design's got the best ones out there. Very cool, man. And then how, when would these all come in handy? Uh, they're just for looks, honestly. Uh, clearance lights, too. Um, yeah. Everybody wants to have a badass looking truck. Come yeah, on, yeah dude, I, th I think so, that would be hard. I think that yeah. would look really cool. Uh, I don't know if you caught the front hitch on the on the bumper. Yeah, let's check so it out. So I got a recovery hitch on the front bumper. You can put a winch in there. You can put a toe strap, whatever you want to do. Smart man. Um, got those, and I also got Another one of our products down here, located where the sway bar goes. Here, you want to show? Yeah, located where the sway bar goes right there is one of our products. Uh, super thick, heavy duty, you know, recovery point. Nice. For you to 
free to go hook up and drag your truck out of the dirt, you know? Right, right out of a, a rain rut or something. Still some stuff to come with it. It's not 100% done. Uh, I'm going to be doing like a really school, like old school Baja style rack with, uh, you know, big round seven inch lights up on top. I just love that error. So there we go. Stick with it, but make it look like it blows with the truck. You know, you don't want something that looks like out of 2007 Craigslist and you threw it on and yeah, it doesn't match the truck. So dude, I think you're going to do a great job making this thing look good. It already looks amazing. Dude. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Heck yeah. So got tow mirrors on it. Cause like I said, I do tow a lot. So right these guys come out and they go back in. So Very cool. Purposeful. Definitely a functional truck. It's so crazy that you tow with this. Still yeah, blown, but yeah, that's awesome. I, blown away. I beat on her like she owes me money. <laughs> <laughs> so in the interior, we got a cage that JC over at Midnight 4x4 helped me out. Him and I sat down and we came up with a plan on uh, what we can do to get a, a bolt-in or like a weld-it-yourself cage for a crew cab. Okay. So this is a weld-it-yourself cage uh, kit that you can get from him. Um, and with a little bit of tweaking, because it's made for a double cab. Okay. So you can do a little bit of tweaking, get it to fit in a crew cab, which is what we did. And we added some extra bars uh, just because I'll go overkill on everything. You'll see in a second. You want to be safe? Yeah, I want to be safe. Uh, door Six bars, eight. everything goes through the floor. Floor is fully sealed. Uh, I did full bed liner on the floor before I put the carpet back in. Wow. Uh, dash is all back in as well. I lost nothing on the dash. That was a big thing. I didn't want to lose any factory features on this. So this still has cruise control, AC, heater, everything you want. Um, buddies from PCI, which are like down the street from me, yeah. hooked me up with their best setup they got, the track system. Hell it yeah. It's a must. I used to knock it until I tried it and you got to have it, man. Tell when us you, about it, man. When you have a case truck, you can hear your conversations with your, you know, passengers so easy. You can listen to music. And I got it wired into the, to the factory stereo too. So nice. when you take off your headsets, it's still playing inside the truck. Dude, big, huge shout out to PCI. Those guys are amazing. Those guys are awesome. Uh, man, Ryder over there at PCI, those guys hold it down. Amazing product. I mean, yeah. dude, it, it speaks for itself. It, it is does. like true American made amazing products. And, and those guys actually totally crush it. Tons and tons of years of experience um, in Baja race communications and everything. I'm running um, PCI and I'm super stoked too. So happy to see that that quality products in here, yeah. bro. And, and then I, we got the headliner. So this was a custom headliner. Uh, okay. I stole it off of Alex's ideas. Um, built Who's this, Alex? Alex is my homie from, uh, I'll, I'll plug in his, uh, okay. his information with you guys. But uh, Alex is my homie that helped me out with, you know, some of the stuff and bouncing back ideas. He's the one that actually motivated him and, and uh, Andy as well. Okay. A lot of my cage ideas that I did in this, uh, I took off of Andy's truck. Killed it. Um, Andy Asmuth, I think his name is on, oh, on yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's yeah. school homie. He's the one that really got my feet wet into this whole. Yeah, he has the LSK White Tundra. Yeah. And that thing eats. Yeah. Funny story, my buddy uh, pre ran down was in Glamis at the drags coming through and he, uh, I think he has like an LS3 or something in that thing. You guys know the truck. Um, he said he was like on it, dude. And then here comes Andy, just flew by him in the tundra. Bad, man. Yeah, and, and and Daniel's like, what the hell? So no shade on Daniel. Daniel shared that story with me, so I'm just gonna throw it out there. Also, uh, Andy, SoCal Tundra guy, man. If you guys are a Tundra fan and you guys follow, um, and you guys are, wanna follow some builds and keep up with some of the Tundra stuff, check out SoCal Tundras. Um, that page is active on Instagram. A lot of cool stuff. They, they have meats and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, yeah, so Cal Tundras, check it out. This is amazing, it's full luxury in here, bro. Yep. I'm gonna have to say it, yeah, this is amazing, I love it. Kept the cage really tight, added a lot of gussets. Um, yeah. Just try to overbuild everything, because nobody wants to do it twice. So right. do it once, really beefy, and never have to do it again. Buy once, cry once. Exactly, so got the PCIs, everything in here, nice flush mounts, your push the talks. Um, a little setup like this. I did this in Elliot's truck too on that excursion. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I see that. Panel, electrical panel for all the switches. And I tried labeling as many as I can. So if someone's in there uh, in the truck, I could say, hey, can you hit that light for me? And they'll know exactly what it is versus just trying to go so, off memory. So cool. And then I like how you put your logo in there too. Yeah, try to do as much as I can. Cause you forget that when you design products, you're like, oh shoot, I should put my logo in there. You have to dude, it's yeah. branding dude. Um, it's so cool to see that you got to keep a lot of the stock, uh, all the stock features. Yeah, I kept all the stock features. It's got cruise control, which is one of our things we want to try, like on uh, uh, the Sand Dragway. Yeah. On uh, Glamis, we want to put it in cruise control, see if it'll keep going. See how it works. <laughs> <laughs> right on, dude. It'd be kind of cool. Let us know, man. We'll be there. Uh, more cyclones? 
More cyclones, yeah, just interior lighting. Okay. Um, those are this one. Yep, those light up. Wow. Just for show, just to try to show off the interior to people, the cage work. I, I'm, again, OEM plus in me. I kept the factory sun visors and yes. they still work. Yes. So, you know, the girls can uh, do their makeup while we go to a nice meet. So, oh, in, in the woods. To the terror crew meet. Yeah, to <laughs> so, the terror crew meet exactly, or, or in the go. woods because this thing's so smooth, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Just check out the back real quick. Back. Sorry about the customer parts right here. Oh, we're chilling, man. <laughs> like I said, she's a work truck too. Got yeah. two fire extinguishers back here. Okay. Uh, fire suppression is a big must. I want to do it on this thing one day. Okay. Uh, but fire extinguishers, if it's not for you, uh, it could be for a buddy, it could be for a stranger. You know, desert family, dude. We got to take care of each other. So absolutely. Better to be safe than sorry. It could save someone's life. So I have plenty of fire extinguishers on this truck. I got two in here for passenger and driver, and I got one in the bed too. And Perfect. Soon to have some more, uh, just because you just need it. You, know? you never know, man. You never know, man. Ga yep. Gas fires are hard to put out, and it's scary. Yep. Kept the third row, uh, second row seat, bench seat back here. Got a big old subwoofer behind it. Uh, so when you're not in the desert with that PCI headset, so you can just still listen to the subwoofer. You're still bumping on the way to the 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 SoCal Tundras meet. The, exactly. The, <laughs> there let's you go. go. Yep. Hell yeah. Very cool, man. I absolutely love it, man. This thing is beautiful. Appreciate it. Diving into the meat and potatoes on this thing. Man, so this is a completely universal kit that I built on this truck. So it could go on to any type of truck that has a frame, really. Okay. F-150, Raptors, uh, Chevys, Toyota Tacomas, Tundras. It just takes a little bit of fabrication to, to mock everything up and weld it, but you could put it on pretty much anything. So it's Hell a 64 yeah. inch uh, trailing arm on the okay. bottom. And please don't mind the welds. It's uh. Like I said, we got a lot of hands in this truck. My cousin wanted to learn how to weld, so right I just on. gave him the, the overlace, and I said, hey, go for it, you know. Right on, man, right on. It. So, yeah, it was the first time him doing TIG welding. I think he did pretty good for a first-timer. I mean, you're running the truck. It's holding together. Yep, so the rear end's got a uh, 3.0 by 16 coil over. Okay. Luckily, I got that used, and the spring rate was perfect. Oh, that's so, awesome. Uh, Shout-out to Nick from Fox that helped me out with setting that thing up. Uh, Elliot as well from Onyx Off Road. He uh, he helped me out come in, make a mess of his shop, and rebuild all these shocks. So nice, dude. And then that's still the same shock that I had on it when I did spring under. It's an 18 inch uh, 3.0 3 tube bypass. It's kind of funny. It looks tiny behind that uh, 3 0 coilover. But it, lo it looks smaller, but it, it, it does the job, a you know. Shock, yeah. Yeah. So it definitely works back here. Um, and uh, we're stoked to see what it can do. Honestly, the oh, rear yeah. has got about uh, 20. 28 inches of travel strap. I love how you notched it, dude, so much. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I notched the frame because I, I wanted to get as much up travel, but keep the truck low to yeah. the floor to keep stability up. Yeah. So, very got cool. Got a 2.5 2. bump in the rear as well. Hell yeah. TK1 sway bar, uh, which is awesome because this thing feels like a stock truck when you're driving on the highway. So, you're just turning, it's not body yeah, rolling, it it's move. planted. Yeah. Yeah, it's super nice, but in the dirt, it still still has articulation. Right, right. Uh, and then I don't know if you saw the rear airbags. That's how. That's oh, the sauce. so I was kind of yeah. The sauce to making a tow happen. Tell us, man. Tell us about this thing. So this is a uh, rear cantilever uh, airbag setup that I did. Um, so right now the cam's in the rest position when you're not using it. When you uh, you are using it, you pull this pin out, cam spins down, hooks up to the airbag, and then you have a link that's inside that's adjustable uh, that you pin from the cam to the diff as well. And you can, these pack, these bags take like 600 PSI, but wow. I found at 120 PSI with 10,000 pounds, it's like perfect. Really? Yeah, and it's got a, a onboard air compressor in there, um, all the way like tucked up in there. Yeah, And nice uh, and clean. Yeah, it's all wireless. So from inside the truck, you can you can monitor the system and add more air. Dude, this is some next level pre-runner stuff. <laughs> and all that's universal, so you can put wow. it on. If you already got a link truck, you can put that on. You guys hear that? Dang. Hit you guys, you guys got to hit up can. Andrew, man. Hit up Andrew if you guys want some of this freaking amazing new pre-renter technology. <laughs> it's freaking amazing. It makes your truck worth it, right? It makes you still be able to utilize your truck, have some fun. You know, you don't have to go freaking smashing through Barstow, Maine, but you can get out there and go hit some whoops, have a good time. He, Andrew drives the hell out of this thing, and he's towing a 20-foot toy hauler. Uh, it's an enclosed trailer. The enclosed yeah. trailer, yeah, something I've like that. I've done toy haulers. That's wild, dude. I've done 25 foot toy, toy haulers. Amazing. So bro. it's got a um, shout out to Izzy Fab. It's got an Izzy Fab cradle. Okay. Uh, off of Silverado. Really? That we made fit. It like fit the Tundra frames like perfectly. Uh, it's got a Jazz fuel cell back there, uh, 32 gallons. Where is it at? 
Uh, it's right here. Right under the bed where the spare would go. Okay. You can see that? <clears throat> oh yeah, there we so, go. So I kept the front, I kept the rear bumper to like follow that line too. So from the back, it just looks like one piece of aluminum. Awesome. I love that. Super clean and flush, man. And I relocated the hitch up higher. So that's the factory center section of the hitch. And then okay. it, it's grafted into a whole new section of the frame. And then this whole truck uh, has been plated. The frame's been plated from the outside and the inside. And Damn. it's also got internal gussets. Damn, it's Andrew. Built, it's built heavy, dude. Let's like, go. There are sections of the frame, if you try to cut it, it's like almost an inch and a half thick. Oh, my God. Yeah, because the exhaust also goes through the frame, which we're still building it. But okay. <laughs> yeah, the, it'll have dual side exit exhaust Okay. Uh, that'll come out of both fenders because we don't have the factory gas tank anymore. So it's pretty dude. cool to do this setup. Dude, I'm like, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm happy to be here for this episode. <laughs> Evan, you are probably so jealous right now in your face. Yeah. Yes! 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 <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no, this is awesome, man. And again, all the details, everything of how flush the truck looks. It looks just so clean. This truck is linked, but yet, it, look, it has the freaking tailgate on there. It has a, a jazz fuel cell right there. It's ready to party, dude. Insane. Oh, speak, Killed it. speaking of partying, so I posted a post about uh, the stock gas store. Like, what should we do with it? You know? Yeah. Part of me wanted to like completely just blend it in, make it look like it was never there. Right. Uh, and then part of me was like, hey, that's a good little Easter egg to do something cool with. So I put it out one day after a couple of beers. I was like, hey, should we do a beer bottle opener? And everyone was like, do it. If you ever need to open your beer, you got a beer bottle opener right there. <laughs> and now everyone's doing it, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> this man is a genius. A genius. I hope that's so. awesome, dude. Dope. You guys should make like a little kit or something for that. Hey, why not? You know, if anyone wants to do this kit, you know, you got a beer bottle opener. There you go. There you put, go, put dude. Put it in your order. Beer bottle opener. There it is, dude. You heard it from Andrew himself. Hell yeah, man. Very cool. Uh, anything else to go over back here? Uh, yeah, actually, the fenders. So again, the racer in me got to be able to make these trucks work to come off uh, or to work on. So the fenders come off. Uh, everything has nut certs on it. Okay. So with the Makita, you can just take out all these uh, all these fender uh, bolts, and the okay. whole fender pops off. Okay. So you can work on your truck. Nice. Uh, you got your onboard air right here. So just a little quick rubber freight connector right there. Very cool. Got your uh, Max tracks on the back. I think those are like some China ones, but hey, they work. Hell yeah. Actually, I've never had to use them, so I want to know. Well, you got four-wheel drive, so <laughs> you you're chilling. four-wheel drive, I'm chilling. But <laughs> then I built a uh, chase bar in the back because no one had the setup that I wanted. Uh, apparently, you can't get a bar with all them working that's under, you know, three, four hundred dollars so Wow, okay. I built one myself. So the outside ones are brakes, which are wired all the time. The next ones inside are amber, and then the center ones are, are blue, which are nice, dude. Right? Heck yeah. Cage kicking out the rear. Try to keep it low key again. Love it, dude. I love I love the 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 notch right here too. What, what's the name of this uh, bend? Uh, it's a miter. Miter bend. So yeah, so it's a miter bend with a partition inside. Uh, so it's, it's actually a thicker piece of metal inside than uh, the tube. So this is a 120 wall. Uh, that's a 3/16 nice. miter inside, and then it's welded. Uh, haven't in a rosette welded because there's a sleeve from here all the way down about six inches into the cage. Nice. The cage also comes out again right here where the shock mounts. So the cage comes out again. And this whole section right here, I'll send you some photos. Okay. That whole section right there has got like insane lacing to, to make sure everything's strong. So like Hell I yeah. said, I overbuilt built the crap out of this truck. So That's amazing, bro. And then are you running uh, one, one full-size spare? One full size spare, so that's where the tunnel cover comes in handy because I always worry someone's gonna mess with my stuff when always. I go to like get something from the store. Well, can I just say how awesome this cover is too? It looks so clean, dude. I'm telling you, bro. I'm I'm getting influenced <laughs> by this truck right here, dude. So it's got a full setup on the bed. I'll open the cover for you. Nice. It goes all the way. Wow. So it's a fully sealed bed. Because that was one of the things that pissed me off about having a... Uh, Pre-runners, everything's exposed, everything's ready exposed, to go. Everything's exposed, man. So it's like you put your bag back here, and by the time you get home from the desert, it's like covered in sand. you got to wash everything. So Yeah. Yeah, uh, full-size spare. Um, easily be able to remove, and then you can use the whole bed. Uh, I got my shovel that I built when I was in school. And a bunch Sick. of people tried stealing that from me. I'm like, no way. I love it, dude. So it's got a shovel. i got an axe in there because we chop a lot of wood when we're you know out there camping for a couple of days. Uh, Harper Freight Jack, it's one of their newer ones. I think it's the lightest weight jack that they have. Nice. Or second to lightest weight. So I built that. I built a whole mount for it and skip plate because 
why buy it when I can build it? And then um, this is where your gas filler neck is now. So Very it's cool. a stock gas filler neck that I just modified. And then I completely made that part of the bed. So if you ever need to service it again, take off the bed, uh, it stays with the bed. You just disconnect the, the gas tank underneath with the hose and everything stays there and the whole thing comes off. Right on. Air system in there. Uh, you got, I still got my CO2 for my bottles because you need a backup for your backup. Very Why cool. not? And then uh, spare f uh, fluids because you always need spare fluids. Another fire extinguisher. Very cool. Um, easy access for the fuel tank right there. And Smart, dude. Same with Smart the back man. right there. So all my electrical components um, and uh, air tank and everything is all in the back right there. So you can Got see it. that panel. It Sick. It out. Nice, so man. Rear end, man. It's Love it, dude. Pretty basic. Still have enough room for a cooler. This guy said pretty basic. Get <laughs> out of here, dude. It's so freaking awesome. Cooler. Super original, amazing building. Dude, it's well thought out. It's perfect, dude. So the whole frame right here has been plated all the way through. And even underneath the truck, all been plated and have internal gussets, hard lines, stainless steel hard lines for the fuel. And all this lacing underneath that ties into the cage as well. Did all brand new drive shaft, 3500 Silverado center bearing carrier. And limit strap for the drive shaft just in case if it breaks. And stock differential in the back just has a trust on it. The full four link setup. So Andrew's gonna give us a quick little shop tour, really quick. By the way, Andrew wanted to share that this side of the house right here is where the Tundra was built in four months with, 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 with Grandpa. Mm -hmm. with Pretty six sick. six inches from side to side to, to move, so. Insane, dude. You don't need an expensive shop to build a truck, man. You just need the space that you could just do it on side of your parents' house. Freaking sick, man, awesome. Just finish it before they kick you out. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> shop right here get the lights in a second this is my 67 camaro i built with my dad you see how young i was when we started that project full frame off restoration. look how stoked you are dude oh yeah dude this is rad this is my uh little quarters going wild here because just in the middle of projects right on unfortunately that car got t-boned by uh, a kid in the civic so oh really yeah as you can see the broken fender there so that's why that car's not here we're rebuilding that car right now so wow wow had to buy a brand new welder for the truck there it is so miller shout out to miller miller 255 this is my 68 camaro this one's almost done and this is where i built it man i mean you can see between the storage and or home improvement storage and some upholstery parts like yeah everything we built here i didn't i didn't take it anywhere i didn't take anything out for upholstery at a shop we did it all here so that's amazing dude yep little little homemade toolbox got enough light homemade bench it's one of my favorite things i ever built got an anvil that's made out of a railroad track dude <laughs> just, yeah man i mean i love it dude it's so damn authentic and it's, genuine it's just old school racer vibes you know you just got to get it done in some way somehow so it's so badass got a little spot and just like my you know like caveman in his cave just working away this so. is this is super like cave vibes but yeah. i love it dude yeah so hell yeah trail command cave right here man yes sir you know my tools and just went to town best thing i ever bought right there well milwaukee porta band made a little section right there that thing cut out so much stuff incredible yep. so stoked for you man well hell yeah andrew thank you man thanks for sharing this this is really special bro appreciate it man yeah, wish I could cleaned up here, but was working this morning. <laughs> We're chilling, dude. This is real. This is yeah. real. Real Thank life you. stuff right here. We almost forgot the most important part. Tell me, tell me. So this truck was built by me, and I was lucky enough to build it with my 76-year-old grandfather that was side-by-side -side with me in four months on the side of my house. We built this thing. Wow. So That is a record, bro. Yeah. That's like beyond. That's that. phenomenal. We're stoked on that. So has has has, has uh, Grandpa been able to ride in the truck? So Grandpa doesn't usually ride in a lot of my cars that I build, but this one he does ride in. He's got Hell a big yeah. old smile on his face. So that's ultimate, dude. Those, that's like ultimate goals right there, man. Very cool. Free runners bring families together. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the episode. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you guys know anybody that's building a a tundra and you want to share this thing to send it to them and don't forget to stop by the store the pick up some merch and later dudes bye